Today we are talking about two-person mechanics. A lot of people are interested in two-person mechanics and what to do and where to go and all that stuff. So I'm going to do my best to go through a lot of stuff and hopefully it'll be helpful. All right, let's go ahead and get our first video up. Here we go. Proper mechanic? What do you guys think? Did that crew of two report the foul properly? Up by the book. He doesn't go to the reporting area. One. He doesn't go to the reporting area. And they didn't and switch. They didn't switch. Okay, now before we play this again, in a two person game, just like in a three-person game, there are very specific procedures on how to switch for fouls, okay? The book says for every non-shooting foul, you switch, every one. It doesn't matter if you're right there in the reporting area at the table. This one was across the table, but um, if you're right there and you just can report a turn, it doesn't matter. They want you to switch every non-shooting foul, okay? If it's a shooting foul, they still want you to switch unless you're already table side. So you can just turn around, report, and you can stay. Does everybody understand that? And then there's some backcourt ones, if you call it in the backcourt. Uh, we can go over that too when we get to the videos. But every non-shooting file, you switch. And I get it. A lot of these I'm going to not fault the officials per se on not switching because We've all worked games where we're saving our steps, right? We got maybe a double that night and we don't want to switch because it's extra steps. And we want to make sure we stay fresh as we can. I get that. All right. But we're going to look at this, what we should do. If you are trying to move up into the next ranks, you should be doing this regardless of saving steps or not. Okay. Let's watch that one again. Let's play it slow, uh, fast, and then I'll slow it down and we'll, we'll mark it out. What should have happened? All right, we got a foul here, which I think is okay. He sees a foul, he calls the foul, does the preliminary signal, throw in spot is here. We all agree with this so far? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> First thing we need to do when we report is get to the reporting area, right? He, this official reporting should be at least center court. Okay. Divide the court in half. So you have a table side and an opposite table at the very least should be right in the center. That's where the box That's begins. Box. Okay. He didn't do that, but then the lead official needs to initiate the switch. Okay, we can't leave it up to the reporting official because the reporting official has to report the foul. So the other mm. official, the non-reporting official, initiates the switch by coming over to the throw-in spot. And that way, when he's done reporting, can move to the fill into the spot that's open, which is the lead. Everybody got that? Yeah. That's simple enough, right? But you have to remember, if you are the non-reporting official, it's your job, basically, to start the switch. You have to initiate it. And then if your partner turns around because he just wanted to go back, oh, hey, you're there. Most guys, even the ones that say, we're not switching tonight, I don't want to switch. We all have worked with those people, right? Most guys, if they turn around because they're not switching and they see you there, they're not going to say, get back down there. Right? There might be one or two that are going to be like that. But most of us say, oh, you're there. Okay, I'll fill in. And that's how you do it. That's how you force a switch for a guy that doesn't want to switch. You initiate the switch. Good? Yeah, Jay, Josh, I got a thing, a uh, comment for you. I know you're just graphically moving that guy, but just, just so like we all know 
you don't run through the players. Right. So you're going to go around uh, yeah, all the just, players. Right. Down the sideline one way, down sideline the other way. We don't go through the players, right? It just looks sloppy. It looks yeah. bad. Yeah. Good point. And I, you're right. Yeah. It's just because. I know you were doing. Maybe I was lazy in my graphics, Tim. I don't know. Uh, so real quick question on that. It, I get the one guy that was baseline, the lead official comes around. He's got clear out and around because he's not going table side to make that switch. If you're the table, if you're the reporting official and going over, when he's got to go around, I'm, I assume he's got to, he hasn't called anybody in or out, but you may have players going towards the sideline. What's he do to make sure he stays out of the way of players that may be talking to a coach, but are still staying on the court? Players that are coming out of the game or just over there? By it it could, be, could be, could uh, be, well, because I assume he didn't report anybody to come in. So I'm saying just if players were wandering over towards the sideline, towards their coach to get advice without an official timeout, they're staying on the court. Okay, so that's a good question. When we say don't go through the players, there's always going to be instances where they're off to the side or maybe they walk in front of you or and you end up going okay. through one or two players. That's okay. But when okay. you've got eight players in the middle and you just shoot right through them, that's what we're saying to avoid. Go around okay. the bulk of the players. Thank you. Yep. All right, let's try and do another. Um, let's do another foul if we can, if I can find one. Same game. I only have so many two-person games, so a lot of this is going to be same game. Okay, what do we think? Did they handle this properly or no? Got a foul on the end line. <laughs> foul on the end line. The official goes to report. It looks as though the non-reporting, the non-calling official initiates the, the switch, correct? Gets in position. And the calling official then stays table side. Let's let's see here. Got it marked out. Okay, we got a foul. Okay, yes, we all know it's a foul. And that's the ruling official. That's the verbiage in, in the book, ruling official. So he goes to report. And the non-ruling official will initiate the switch. Goes around the players. Perfect. While the ruling official is reporting to the table. And he will stay table side. That is a perfect switch for a foul. Now, this is a shooting foul. But that's exactly what happens on a shooting file. You report to the table and then you stay table side. Everyone got that? Yes. Yeah. I want to yeah. make one comment. I'm sorry, were you going to make close. a close? He was too close to the uh, table. That, when he very good. That was my yeah. comment. That is not the reporting area. Okay. Do you see the box painted on the floor or the lines? Like the know. volleyball 10 foot yeah, line. Are those volleyball lines. Yeah. yeah. That is about where that line closest to the table. That is about where the reporting box ends. So you don't need to be any closer to the table than that line. Okay. It starts at the top of the three point line, right? Dead center goes all the way to the other side of the top of the three point line. And the box goes up to about that line. It could be a little bit bigger, but you don't need to get that close to the table. So I'm glad you saw that because. That's a pet peeve of mine. And does it make a huge difference? It could in games where coaches are watching and they need to see you because you need to back up. But in the, in the grand scheme of things, probably doesn't make a big difference, right? Unless someone like me or uh, maybe an assigner or maybe someone who has influence with someone who's working on a level that you want to get to sees it and says, oh, this guy doesn't even know what he's doing. He's, why is he going all the way to the table? So don't give them that impression. Maybe you do know what you're doing. Maybe you went up there for a reason, but... I'm watching and I'm just going to say, oh, he's too close to the table. Like he's got a ways to come before he understands what he's doing. Does everyone understand that? Yes. Yep. It's about most of what we do is about perception, un unfortunately. So there, there's one other thing I know, and maybe I missed it and he did it. I didn't see the reporter or ruling official count that the basket was good. And I didn't see him like when he was over by the bench, like, 
I don't know if it matters or not of like what kind of foul it was, whether okay. it was say it a block or a hat, you know, did more the of an basket armor. count. Let me let me No, it was no good. The basket wasn't any good. Oh, it wasn't? No. Oh, then I missed it. Sorry, I was okay. So if it's not good, you, the, you don't need to wave anything off. Okay. The bucket didn't go in. And when you he's, report, you don't need to wave anything off because the bucket didn't go in, right? He signaled okay. two shots right away. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed that piece. All right, I Thank didn't you. see it either. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay. All right. Okay, now, I, this is something that's less mechanics related and more something we see a lot at the two person level, which is why I put it in. Okay. Want here, let's play this out slow. Whose area is that? Leads. Lead. Who's watching this play? Lead. Okay, so this is the leads area, yes? Yes. And the trail, even though the trail really doesn't have much to look at right now, the trail, since he is now looking into the leads area to help out, he should be watching the paint. I know there's no competitive matchups really going on right now, but that's where he should be focusing. He should not be watching the ball. Why should he not be watching the ball even to help out? Because 30 could potentially do something if the ball gets on his side. Well, anyone could potentially do something, and he does need right. to be ready for that. Things right? happen in the paint. <laughs> You can miss an off ball foul. Right. Who's closest to that play? Lead. 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 Do you think even if he sees something, he's going to see it as well as the lead sees it? No, he's looking through three to four people. Do you think him calling this foul made the lead look good? No, and he's going to get a hard time for uh, calling it right. in now, the first place. Right. And maybe oh, he and by won't. The, maybe by the way, that's will. placed on, on guarding the ball. But, but chances are the coaches, even if they don't say anything, going to say, yeah, okay, he got, let's say he got the foul and the lead missed it. Let's say that that's what happened. But now he's going to be expected to help that official out the rest of the game in their minds, right? We don't want to set the tone of I'm calling the whole floor. We have to trust our partner. Shouldn't he be working the arc a little bit more? Yeah. He should be probably coming in. Yes. I would say either toward up and toward by 30 to get a good look in or down and toward 30. I would go down and toward 30 just because the action is going to be happening in the paint, right? Right. And if the ball swings back up to the top, he can easily move back toward the top of the ball. So okay. you don't have to be back further than the highest player on the court? Um. Yes and no. It's a good general rule of thumb, but in a two-person game, you kind of have to be flexible because you could have a lot of players in your area as the trail, and yet the ball or some players are beyond you uh, toward the division line. Does that make sense? Did I say that right? Okay. So you, you're going to have to be flexible in order to get the best look of the players that you are officiating at that time. Not necessarily where is everybody, but who am I watching? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, so when the ball comes up and the foul is made, technically, it's out of the leads area. Do we agree? Borderline. You're, you're right, borderline. And if it's borderline, that means it's transitioning, which means, as I already showed, the lead is probably still on this play. Right. So we, don't, we don't need a whistle there yet for, as the trail. You guys agree with that? Yes. This I bring up and it's two person mechanics because transitioning, if, if you want to move up higher and start doing three person, knowing your areas and what to watch is extremely important. You have to be able to trust your partner is going to handle that over there. Even if you saw a foul that was blatant. Now, if it's a safety thing, that's a little different, right? But blatant foul, you saw it. You're 50 feet away and he's five feet away. I'm still not calling that. Maybe we didn't see something that happened 
which is why he's passing on the next one. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I know we're taking it to the extreme, but you have to trust that your partner knows what he's doing and is applying the rule uh, that makes sense at that particular time. Josh, that's a good example. I had a situation like that with a partner, uh, uh, a more experienced official, um, and that's exactly what he told me. I mean, he was literally standing about five feet away and he didn't take the call on an obvious foul. And he told me that, you know, once a timeout it happened because I took the foul because I thought he missed it. And he told me, he said, Mike, you, um, you don't trust me. And I said, I do. I just thought you had a bad angle. He said, no, I saw exactly what happened. Uh, but these guys have been, you know, uh, battling with each other. And uh, so I was going to let that go. So to your point, I just wanted to let you know that, yes, that that is a tough one to just pass on. But that was a learning opportunity for me. And if you happen to be in front of the coach when that happens and you don't call it because we've just as we've talked. No, my partner's got is right there. It's not necessarily an easy conversation, but when the coach is on, you could say, coach, he was right there. He had yeah. the best look at that play. Cause even the coach, yeah, you agree with the coach maybe because you saw the same thing, but we didn't see what, where they were at that particular, you know, point of the, of the play. So yeah. Okay. Um, coaches may not like it all the time, but they can respect the fact that um, you're letting him who's right in front of the play, make that call. You know, working with a lot of different guys on a two-man crew, I found that it's uh, a good idea to pregame and go over coverage territories, just reinforce it so there's no misconception about who's covering what and you're on the same page once the, uh, once you start up. That's a good thing to, to talk about. I 100% uh, agree. All right, let's go to the next um Go to the next video. Here's a, a pet peeve of mine. Now, again, not necessarily two-person mechanics on this one, but it's an important thing we all must do. And it, it stands out when it comes to being evaluated, whether it's officially evaluation or just someone who's watching it. Okay, did, we, did we see that report? Anyone see anything wrong with what he did? It didn't come to complete stop at first. He put the right hand up first for the number, then the left hand. That's it. Now, you just should come to a complete stop, but we're all kind of uh, at fault for that. I do it all the time. I'm, I, I'm a little more forgiving on that, but he reported with two hands, right? But he went two, four. That's not two hands. That's one and one and then one. Okay. It's 24. Now I don't know what he said. It may he might have said 24, but it's both at the same time. 24. Okay. You might say, eh, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is when someone again is watching you and saying, This guy doesn't, he doesn't quite he could have grasped what he's doing yet. He's not ready to move up to the next level. How come I can't get, you know the varsity games. How come I can't get a college game? Because you're going to four. Stupid little things like that are what help keep us down. And we can't give evaluators or assigners reasons to not move us up because that's what they're looking for. They're not looking for reasons to move you up. They're looking for reasons to not move you up. Okay. Okay, what do you think I'm going to talk about in this clip? I thought it was the wrong call. I didn't think he moved this pivot personally. All right, let's ignore the. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's ignore the call. Oh, okay. And let's look at the mechanics of what happened. Oh, it was a. By the way, that was a travel. Can I just show you? Yeah. Okay, what's his pivot foot right now? His right, right foot. Right, right foot. foot, and then does he pick it up before he starts his dribble? Yeah, he did. I saw it. Yeah, he did. All right, so the All call right. was correct. Yep. See, you you, you drew me in. I I'm a <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> couldn't My let man. it go. 
All right. So the call was correct. He makes the call. This was let's this is live time. Let's go to slow. And then they they get the ball to the they they don't have to switch here. On an out of bounds, when you have a violation, you have an out of bounds, you can bump and run. Okay, so they don't have to but, switch. That was okay. But what but he never do? pointed where to take it out. He did not. Where is the violation? Towards him. Right on the red circle, right? Yeah. So it should be on the other. See, he, he went opposite, but he, we, it should be down there. Do we agree it is outside the arc, so it should go to the sideline, correct? Right. Yes. Should we put it on the opposite table sideline? It's a lazy mechanic. Okay. So the answer is no, we shouldn't. Now, again, I'm giving everyone a pass because sometimes we work games where we're saving steps. I get that. I'm not faulting these officials. What I'm pointing out is the correct mechanic is whatever side you split the court down the middle again, and whatever side is on, it goes to that side of the court for a throw in. Now, if you watch, I want to do it real time real quick before I finish this out. Watch the, um, the trail after he makes his traveling signal. It looks to me as though he wants to take it on his side, but then thinks, oh, well, I, I want to save steps or he's already over there. And so he doesn't point to where it is. He kind of goes, well, well, yeah, okay, we can do it over there. Right? Did you see that? Yeah, he uh, so looks like, like he was going to point. He said he was the point. So but I, then think, point I thought it looked like he was waving the player in. Maybe. Not necessarily pointing to where it should be out of bounds. Okay, maybe. But I don't think he was because he never looked at the I thought he was. Yeah, I uh, thought he yeah. was pointing. Yeah, yeah. So my the thought is, is behind him, actually. Yeah, my thought is they, they maybe not didn't talk about it, but they're, they're trying to save some steps. And okay, does anybody really care? No, nobody really cares. And to your point of the two-hand report, this is something even evaluators sometimes miss because it's not that big of a deal. But it could be, it could make a big difference. And if you if you do it on this play, what if you do it on a play where it should go on the end line and not the sideline or vice versa? It could make a difference as to what the coach calls, right? We all know, maybe we don't, but many of us know coaches have more throw-in plays for an end line than they do for a sideline. Most coaches would much rather have a throw in on the end line because they can strategically get the ball in and score better than they can from the sideline. So we don't want to get stuck in the route of, well, it's easier if you just take it there. Yeah, no problem. Because when it does come to a fact where it may make a difference and then we don't do it right, it could affect the game. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. All right. Let me play it again fast real quick and see if you can point out what I want to talk about in this video. He signaled the try for the three, but didn't say that it uh, was successful. Okay, so we've got a three-point shot, right? In a two-person game, who signals a three-point uh, attempt signal? The guy, this, whose area, the guy whose area it is, of coverage it is. That's absolutely right. In this play, it's the lead. But in a two-person game, it is split down the area that you are covered. It's the same in a three-person, to be honest. But in three-person, the lead never shows it or hardly ever shows it. But in a two-person game, the lead has to be responsible for the free-throw line extended to the um, end line that he's standing. Right? right? right. right. Okay. Yeah, I, I would hate the uh, trail to uh, be the one making that call because I, I mean, from that angle, you can see it wasn't even close. But uh, if he's making that call and and the guy is closer to the line, I, I would that 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 to me would be a problem. He, he's, closing, he's closing down on that when he should have gone out wide, just in case there was a foul out there too. Yeah, he he could have a better angle, uh, for sure. But what I want to point out on this is coverage area. He goes up for a three point signal, right? Yep. Right. What is the trail doing? Mirroring him. Does the trail mirror an attempt signal? 
No, 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 just, no, no, no. Just completion. What is the that trailer's ball watching? Yes, that usually is an indicator that you're watching the ball, mm. and or you're watching your partner. <laughs> but so then look at the lead. The lead doesn't even signal that it's good. If you are the yeah. lead and you signal a three-point attempt, you mm. also signal the successful sign. Okay, and then when you signal the successful sign, that is when the trail will mirror right. the signal. Right. But we I do agree. not, it, and this is, goes in three person too, but we do not mirror a three point attempt no. at the trail position. Okay, always this. Why do we mirror the successful? So the table is probably easy to see. The table can see the trail easier sure. than they can see the lead. Does the table need to know that it was a three point attempt? Not an no. attempt, no. No, they don't need to know attempts. So that's why we don't need to give the, the mirror of that signal. I'm sorry, Indeed. someone was trying to make a comment. Oh, I said, especially if that lead, that trail is table side, then it's much easier for them to see it, you know, as opposed to looking cross court. Right, well, even if they're opposite table, uh, the table is looking that way, right? And yeah. Usually they don't have to look through players to see the official, and so that's that's the right. logic behind it. Yeah. Right. All right. <laughs> Okay, what do you guys think? He wasn't down court in time. He should have been in better position. <laughs> All right, I'm not going criti to criticize this official for not being all the way on the lead because where did it start? Right where he was. But look, they're in the front court, and then the ball gets deflected and stolen. This official probably got further down court than I would have got. <laughs> Then I'll, I'll, just, give, I, I'll give you a different perspective then. I would have rather he stopped at yes. you know, maybe the free throw line. Okay, yes. I'll go with that. Yeah, I, that's what I do. I, I prefer to stop. Knowing that, that get a better view. Knowing that you are beat. Yeah. And there's no way you're going to get down there. Stop. Yeah. Have the best angle from right here to look to see if there's a foul or not. That is excellent, excellent advice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. All right, I'm going to play it from the beginning again, and then we'll slow it down and we'll break it up. What situation is this? What kind of a situation is this? Right? It's a pass and crash situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pass and crash is hard because someone has to take the foul of the crashing and someone has to watch the ball, right? So how do we handle that in a two-person game? Usually a pass and crash will happen down here in the paint, okay? Which this one does. It doesn't always, but usually they happen right around here. When the crash happens in the lead's primary, if the ball is passed out, it's usually to the trail, and the trail is going to stay with the ball. Does that logically make sense? Yes, yep. I agree. Yes. I agree. Okay. Now that's that's the that's that's the OI way of handling a, a passing crash. Okay. Now in the NFHS manual, which is the same as the OI happens to be, but the the way the OI man or the NFHS manual states it is, and I have to paraphrase. When a crash happens. The lead takes the crash, uh, a passing crash happens. The lead takes the crash and the trail takes the ball. Okay, I believe that's the way they phrased it. It's not about whose area it happens in, where the ball goes to, but I think there are a lot of situations where that may not suit it very well. What if a crash happens in the trail and the ball gets passed into the leads? Wouldn't it be smarter for the trail to stay with the crash, if that's where it happened, if the ball was going toward the lead, would you guys agree? Yes. Hey, right, Josh, so, before you leave this yeah. that particular slide, though, um, it, help me understand why does the ball uh, matter in that case? Who has the ball? Well, what if the ball? Now I get it that the you know crash what I'm saying? the call happened right there. I yeah. got a whistle's dead. Everything stops. Why do I care? 
if he threw the ball out of bounds or what, whatever. That uh, I just want to know. Because what if the lead doesn't make a foul call there? Oh, okay. All right. You just answered. Okay. So there's right? no so, foul. Gotcha. So now nobody knows what happened to the ball because you were both Understood. looking at the crash. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. But you're right. Like in this, when there's a whistle, yeah, yeah. who cares? Okay. All right. I just thought it may have been something I, I just didn't know. All right. This game again. All right. We'll do this game again. All right, we got a charge call. I'm going to play it fast again. If you think you know what I'm going to talk about, you can tell me. Otherwise, we're going to yeah, I got pro I got problems with that already. The, we're the gonna... lead mate, oh, <laughs> you want it now or you want me to wait? What don't you like about this play? Two guys making the call. All right, so we have a double whistle. But why do we have a double whistle? It started in one guy's area and it went to another guy's area and they both thought they should have had it. All right. Where, right. So where does, there's a drive to the basket. Where does the crash happen? In the paint. Outside, right. outside the paint. Well, okay. Yeah. Right on the line. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm not going to fault either of these officials for having double whistle. In fact, I know some people don't agree when I say this all the time, but double whistles are not a bad thing. Just because you have a double whistle doesn't mean you're ball watching. Just because you have a double whistle doesn't mean you're not following in your area. A lot of times there's stuff along the border. A lot of times there's a, a, a drive in uh, that transitions and, and it's a drive to the basket. So they follow it all the way. How we handle the double whistle uh -huh. Uh -huh. is what determines whether you did a good or a bad job. Uh -huh. Now, there are times where there's a double whistle and it's not good because you've reached 50 feet to you know blow your whistle. Yeah. I get that. But in this play... We agree, right? It's right on yeah. the line. Yeah. Trail had it. I'm going to let me move it back again. Trail had it all the way from when it started here. Right? Now, in two-person and three-person, it is the same. If there is a drive to the basket mm -hmm. and it starts in one primary coverage area and transfers into the next primary coverage area, the original official follows it all the way to the oh, basket. The basket. Okay. okay, so you're going to very likely have a double whistle. Who takes this whistle? Trail. Oh, trail. The, lead, the lead, the trail, trail. The, trail the trail took it. And Who should after, take it? The trail. Trail. The trail. trail. Why does the trail said. take it? Because the word because started all the way through. Yeah, it's in its area initially. Yeah, that's right. Because it started in his area. Yeah. And it was a drive to the basket. And I, if you watch the lead, the lead very mm. quickly puts his arms down. Yeah. Now, he started to, I don't know if he was going to do block or charge. I thought that was a saying basket no good is what. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Which, uh, which yeah. really he was saying right no there. basket. That's so basket he, no good there, Josh. I, I don't like that. He said basket no good probably because he was going to punch it as well. He had a charge yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. So I don't like that he did that, but he did that, realized there was a double whistle and put his arms on. I think that's good because you don't okay. – waving the basket off and, and giving a signal for the foul are two different things. Do we agree? Absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. so we don't have two uh, different fouls. They look at each other kind of like, oh, are you going to take it? Am I going to take it? And then lead take – or trail takes it. And as you can see, if you rewind, lead authoritatively – points to the trail as oh yeah you definitely got it now how we handle who takes it can be done lots of different ways i'm okay with a point you got it i'm okay with that but i don't like it oh really i do it a lot i hate to hear that josh no, no, well, I, me personally, I don't like it and i'll okay. tell you why okay because i shouldn't have to tell you that it's yours I put up my whistle. You have your whistle. I know that it's yours. I'm just going to drop my hand and I'm going to let you take it. Now, if my partner looks mm. at me like you want to do, I want it. Then you got to communicate something. Okay. But mm. a lot of guys will point. You got it. You got it. When you don't have to, you just have to drop your hand and let him take it. Okay. Okay. I think okay. that shows you are more aware of your area, their area, the game in itself. And it just makes you look stronger of an official. I think. Here, here's a here's a uh, devil's advocate on that, Josh. Okay. And the reason why I say that is, my the the other partner. If you don't point, he doesn't want to say something different than what you're about to say. 
And so he doesn't say anything anyway. And then you look bad. So that's the reason why I'm going to side on doing the point, because now it's clear we had a double whistle, but I'm leaning to you to take the call. That's the only reason why I, I do the point. So that it's clear, even though we had a double whistle, it may have been my area. I'm letting you go with it. And I'm, I'm stepping down versus me not doing anything. And then my partner doing anything. And now everybody's looking as like, whose call is it type stuff. The only question I have, though, is since he's pointing it, then he probably shouldn't have waved off the basket to begin oh, yeah, with. Well, he should have waited. Yeah. He should have waited to consult with the other ref to base to see whether he made the charge or block call. Then, yeah. if that charge or block call ref was looking at the ball or looking down at the action as opposed to up to whether the ball went in, mm -hmm. then I could see him going to the lead ref of going, "Did the ball did the ball go in or not?" If he had ruled a block instead of a Got charge. It. Yeah. <clears throat> But I'm not the expert. I'm the newbie in the room. So I'm just speculating based on a fan's point, shifting to an official point. Jack, you have an opinion? Well, my only thought was uh, the lead there was really wide again. He didn't close down when the ball was away from him. Hmm. Right. So that's another thing. And we don't talk about that enough. Uh, I think I have a meeting coming up where we're going to talk about just positioning. Um, but we need to be aware of where we're standing all the time in relation to the players moving in. And it's, it's not like I got to move up and around and get in there. Sometimes it's just a simple four steps in, four steps back. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point. I also didn't like how the trail came all the way down basically to the end line to make yeah. the call. You don't need to yeah. do that either. Yeah, yeah. Now they were looking at each other. They were trying to communicate. I get that. And, and Michael, yeah. to your point, mm -hmm. I understand when you say, but if I don't, then he doesn't. And then we look back. Uh, mm -hmm. that's a i agree that you look kind of bad when that happens but more often than not i think and maybe it, maybe at a lower level it's different but more mm -hmm. often than not when you got that call you mm -hmm. want to make that take that call right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there shouldn't have to be a you can take it i'm just gonna drop it your partner should see that okay he's got to take it and he takes it you see what i'm saying i'm not taking away from what you said and i'm not even saying pointing is the wrong thing to do I, i'm okay with it Mm -hmm. I'm just telling the reason I don't is I think it shows everyone, not necessarily fans, Chris, to your point, but it mm -hmm. shows other officials that may be evaluating. He knows what he's doing. He knows he had two whistles. He knows it's not his primary area. He let it go and he let his partner take it. Hey, hey, Josh. Take Yes. Isn't, I mean, in that specific situation, this video that we're looking at, isn't at this point when you have a double whistle and a crash like that, isn't the most important thing to not have a blarge there? Huh. The most important thing? Yes. I would say that is correct. And it's, again, I liked the fact that they were looking at each other, communicating. They didn't want to have two different signals. That mm -hmm. was excellent. We saw one of these wave off baskets, but the official didn't <laughs> charge or block. That's yeah. excellent. I'm just talking about how can we <laughs> tweak it so it looks better. Yeah, well, it's kind of tough when someone waves off a basket, doesn't it? You yeah. kind of have to go with the charge there, right? I mean, it's no. kind of what is their opinion on no, that? You okay. No, you don't. So I, so an official could go block there, even though one official's waving it off. Doesn't if, that you, kind of... if you're the the trail official there and you have a block the whole way, and you saw your partner wave it off, and then he even points you to say you take it, give a block. Why would you call a charge if you don't think it was a charge? Because he waved it off. You want to be on the same page? I'm not going to worry about my partner. I especially, which is why we let the trail take it, right? Because you had the play from the beginning to the develop to the end. You saw the whole play. That lead might have only saw the crash at the end. Yeah. And okay. he may have bad information because all he got was the end of the information. So I'm not going to feel bad uh, making a call, seeing my partner go like that. I don't care. I know in my mind, whether it's a block or a charge, what I got, what I got, that's what I got. Okay. Okay. Well, it's good. It's good. The uh, the um, trail on that play uh, didn't come in and make a call right away because he saw the lead, like wave it off, wave it off like that. Because the lead, the lead never stopped the clock. He never put a foul fist up. He didn't put a hand up. He he just he just put down the no basket sign. Which that that, that was that was me as a trail. And once I saw him go no basket, I was like, well. Forget everything. I feel like I have to go charge here because uh, well, that was he waved off the basket. That was, yep. that was okay. Smart. Well, if you had a block, I would say you make your call. It's been given okay. to you. 
and don't feel bad about and you could even go back to the video and say yeah i got that wrong but yeah. you got to believe in yourself on the court with what you see at the time you see it you got to believe it because if you don't you're never going to look like you're an official out there you're going to look like a guy who's just there to make some money because you don't really know what's going on okay yeah and Josh, we were able to slow that down and look at yeah. where that started in real time there's no way that lee knows that that play did not happen in his area and that's kind of where i i saw the I, I agree with the wave off but he didn't you know i i, I don't know I, I think we talked about it enough it happens and it, just knowing how to handle it is um how to handle it is is really the key yeah hey, hey josh on yeah. that on that on that play there what what do you think about um going over and having a quick word with your partner on something like that when you're kind of looking at each other or whatever i don't like um, it okay no. And I, and I, I know a lot of guys say, well, you should get together. And why, especially to Michael's point, yeah. you pointed to me, mm -hmm. you don't get an opinion. Now you just yeah. gave the call up. Yeah. I'm taking it. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you have whistle block charge, you got to get together. Yeah. There's no way around. You got to get together. But if you're letting, dropping your hand, letting your partner take it or pointing your partner. No, I'm not going to confer because again, I don't care what you have. I know what I have. And that's all I can call is what I have. And you, you have to continue to sell that too, Josh. And yes. the more time we delay on that, you got people that didn't like the call in the first place that's just looking for something that doesn't look right for them to jump on. So I, I agree to to definitely to confer with, with, with definitely give a bad signal because you got to sell that right away. Two whistles bad enough and you definitely, somebody's got to sell it and go for it. Well, and think about this. You changed the call. Maybe you had blocked the whole way. You saw him wave it off and I should probably go charge so we can match up. Then the coach asks you about it, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe you had something and you got together and you came and then the coach asks you, and that's not the call that you had. How are you going to explain to the coach why you yeah, called right. a charge or a block? Because yeah. my partner had it. That makes you look weak as an official. You need to be able to say, coach, I saw he moved over at the last second and initiated contact toward the opponent or whatever you want to say. Now the coach is going to believe that more than, well, we talked about it and you know, we <clears throat> both agreed. Okay. That doesn't sound very convincing. Next thing out of his mouth is uh, you owe me one. <laughs> hey, Josh, Josh, I got one more comment on that too. Okay. Just because the lead is waving that off. He, he might not be saying that it's not a basket. He might be, be saying no shot. So he's saying no shot. It doesn't mean he's going to call a charge. He's just saying the guy's not, the guy's not shooting. Very good. He could have a block before the shot. That's through. right. That's right. That's a good point. That's a good point. All right, let's move on. We talked to that one to death. That was good. Yeah, really. All right, here's a boring one, but it's important to know. Before the game. Now, right now, this is pretty good. Okay, the two guys are at the uh, opposite table at the division line, but where should they be? Over there on the side where the table is, yep. about to get the two uh, captains together, I would think. Okay, don't look at the clock. I don't know how much time is on the clock. Don't look at that. Okay. Let's say it's 14 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. What is our job 14 minutes before the game as officials? Watch the players. Yeah. Watch the players. We're on? Yeah. Each official should be at the, about the 28 foot mark mm -hmm. watching the players home or visitor. And I know there's specific assignments, so to speak, but I don't care who's watching what, as long as one's watching one and yeah. one's watching the other. Yeah. We, now we're all guilty of gabbing in the middle and I get that it's, it's a boring part of the game, but our job is to be all watching the players. All of this being made okay. So after we're done watching the players, Now we can look at the clock. I actually superimposed the clock to fit what I want to talk about. <laughs> We're at 11 minutes before the game starts. The officials are talking things through. At about 11 minutes, the referee should come and check the book. Why do we go at about 11 minutes and not 10? The, the rule clearly says anything under 10 is a foul, right? Yes, there's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, if there's a problem with the book and we can fix it yep. before we get to that 10 minute mark, we're going to fix it. I'm not going to say the coach didn't supply his roster. Oh, this is going to be so fun. We're going to tee him up. 
right? No, we're going to go to the coach and say, coach, I don't have your starters or I don't have your roster or, oh yeah, okay, hold on. And remember, they don't have to be in the book. They don't need to have all their roster in the book. It has to be supplied to the official score so they can just give them a sheet of their players. And if the sheet is there, they have met the requirement. Okay. Now, as he's checking the book, he's done, he signs it. I suggest, by the way, when you sign the book in the locker room before you go out, get your partner's number and name and put their name and number in the book as well. You both can put your own in, that's okay, but it just looks better and cleaner when you are the referee, you can put everybody in there. Only one person has to touch the book, okay? When the book is done, we gather the coaches together and we can bring a captain. COVID, they only did one. Sometimes they do more. Uh, the, the rule, I just want everyone to know, the rule is this is a coaches meeting. We are supposed to meet with the coaches. So a captain doesn't necessarily have to be there. I'm not saying not, don't let them come in. That's, that's fine. It's been a captain's meeting for, you know, 40 decades. But my point is, if the captains aren't there, that's okay. You just want to make sure that the coaches hear what you have to say. That's the main point. All right, when, they, when it's over, where do we go? You're done with the coaches meeting. Go back to the spot. Yeah, we just go back to the foot line. Table. Don't hang around the table. Don't go talk to Susie in the stands. Oh, well, you know, I've known her since she was a kid, or I know that guy, you know, because he lives in my neighborhood and don't, it, that looks bad. It's okay to say hi. It's okay to even shake a hand and give a pleasantry, but having conversations with fans or even coaches for an extended period of time looks unprofessional and we should avoid it. All right. Okay. Now that's probably something we noticed the least because nobody's even there before your game starts. Right. But you should still know how to do it before it starts. All right. Okay. Foul here. Right. Which means what? We have a foul here. So what does that mean? Let me screw back. We have a foul here. What does that mean? What are we going to do? Say that where the ball is going to be placed first. Where is the ball going to be placed for a throw in? The nearest, I, I thought it was the uh, out of bounds nearest to on where the end line. didn't happen. That's the right. Line. Nearest the spot of the foul, which right. is on the end line. The end line, sure. Yeah. Right. And we're not going to put it under the basket, are we? Oh, no. No, we're going to put it just to the right or left, End depending the on what side of the lane we're on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So knowing that our, th our throw-in goes there, we go to report. And this is the guy that likes to report all the way off the court. That's too close. We already know that. But he's reporting. Now the coaches call the timeout. Okay? We report the timeout. What kind of timeout is he, is he reporting? That's a 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So where do we stand? as two-person officials for timeouts. Right in the center half court, I thought. There's two officials. You're both stand in the center? No, no, no the one that's reporting. Yeah. The official's going to administer the throw-in, stands at the spot of the throw-in with the ball. Well, where do you go? Okay, now they're so just the kind of – knows where it's coming in, so he knows what to draw up. Right, right. So the – to, to what you said, I'm not sure who that was, but the administering official, the one who's going to administer the throw-in, stands at the throw-in spot. Mm -hmm. Okay? The mm -hmm. non-administering official stands at the top, uh, and that, that's the one nearest, when I say the top, the one nearest the table uh, of the division line circle. Mm -hmm. If it's a 60-second timeout, where do we stand? Back, uh, of the uh, back, back of the circle. That's right. We move to the the um, the part of the circle that is farthest from the table. All right. Those are our spots. Best. Now, again, uh, our administering official needs to be over here mm -hmm. with the ball, mm -hmm. waiting for play to resume. Yes. Okay. If there's going to be free throws. I bet you didn't know this. 
There are supposed to be free throws. The administering official is supposed to be standing on the free throw line mm -hmm. in line with their partner. So if it's a 30 second, they'll be at the top. If it's a 60 second, they'll be at the bottom. Mm. Okay, that's if it's going to, free throws are going to follow. That's the first time I've heard that. Oh, it's the first time I read it when I looked it up. <laughs> Nobody does that. Now, yeah, really. Now, if teams are late coming out, who do, given if the one guy's down on the end line and the other fish is out at center court, who does who does like warnings to each bench based on first or second warnings? The non-administering official will go into each after the buzzer horns into each uh, team okay. bench area and go, hey, first horn. So he's got to hustle to both to yeah. both benches. Then. And you okay. got 15 right. seconds okay, to get thank in you. there. And we're not trying to hustle them out, you know, and be jerks about it, right? So you could take yeah. a little bit of time, but run into one and then run over to the other. And, okay. and then the uh, administering official is ready to go when you tell them you're ready to go, right? We both look at each other all the time and say, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, we're ready mm -hmm. to go. Josh, is that an automatic tech if they do not come out when you tell them or you can give them a warning? Do you well, have to administer a technical? Nothing is automatic. Okay, I shouldn't say automatic, but yeah. it's expected. I, um, I guess I would, that. I would say, do your very best to not issue a technical foul. Okay. And although we have been told time and time again, we got to get them out. We got to get them out. We got to right. start on time. Nobody wants to see nobody watching, nobody playing, nobody coaching, nobody refing wants to see a technical foul because they didn't come out in time. Okay. So just do your best to help them out. Um, if you need to use the resumption of play procedure, do you know what the resumption of play procedure is? Put the ball down. You just start put the ball, the ball down. down. You blow your whistle yes, start, start really start loud counting. so everyone knows that you blew the yes. whistle. You yes. put the ball down and you start counting. Yes, yeah, I've done that many what times. If it's a, what if it's the defensive team? If the offensive team comes out and ready and the defensive team, you hand them the ball and go? Hand them, blow your whistle really yeah. loud. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to even look over and maybe even say, we're going to start right now. Yeah, I've said okay. balls in play. I've, I've said balls coming in many a time. You're going to give them as much as you can, but if they're not coming out, and I'm not saying, hey, first horn, and then the second horn goes, coach, second horn. Nope. Okay, here we go. No, I'm going to give them lots of ch chances. Yeah. And yeah. it's the coach that's being a jerk that's not taking the chances that I'm giving him. You can do that. Now, some okay. will say, I'm never doing it ever. Uh, okay, that's why nothing's an automatic. We all have that choice. Mm -hmm. But if you do that once, and they lose the possession or they get a bucket against it because it ain't going to happen again. They're going to come out when you ask them to come out. Yeah. All right. What do you think I have on this? Um, I'm guessing it was the trail official signaling that he's got the clock, but I didn't see nothing wrong with that. What uh, signal is this? So, is that in the NFHS rules book? No. The answer is no. No, it's, but you see it a lot. It's in that's the NCAA a, rule book. That's a 24, that's a 30-second uh, violation. Shot clock, shot clock violation. violation. Okay. Shot clock okay. violation. Now, it might be in the one that's going to be, we're getting this year. They might update it since a lot of, um, a lot of states now are adopting the shot clock. Maybe it's going to be in there. But that's what that signal is, shot clock violation. And this is why we don't use it. Because now that we are adding it, our guy's going to say, I've got the clock, and then do shot clock violation signal? No. So what's the, what's the correct uh, shot clock? Uh, I mean, not shot clock. I got the last. Um, yeah. What's so, the correct signal? So there isn't one officially, but the, okay. the, the official's manual does say you can pat your chest to mm. say, I've got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. Um, however, I would venture to say we should all know that the trail has the last second shot in this situation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't communicate. We should communicate that there's a last second shot, maybe by putting one finger in the air. Okay. Okay. That doesn't mean hold See it that. in the air for 30 seconds until right. your partner sees it, but you want to communicate. And that's all because now we're all smart officials. We know the trail has the last second shot in this situation. Mm. All right, so that's the first one. I don't like this signal. It's okay. not a signal appropriate for the time. What's the other one? Okay, he's got a three-point shot. He's signaling three-point. 
Times over. What's that? That's that's nothing. What <laughs> he did should the be... lead just do? He said that the, way the game is over or the time clocks out, which is not his signal. It should come from the uh, trail. All right. Now, the lead, I am in no way thinking that the lead is saying no good, no good. I don't no, think he's no, doing he, that at all. No, he he's said doing the clocks, exactly what clocks. Michael said. He's just saying game over. The yeah. buzzer went off, game over. But this is not a game over signal. Mm -hmm. What if that ball goes in and I do this, game over? Yeah. That means he's telling you that the basket's no good. I just said, <laughs> no, the basket's no good. Mm -hmm. Right? So don't do this, especially even at the trail. At the trail, don't go game over. But especially at the lead, do nothing. You don't, it's not your call. Unless you are asked for help, you may help, but it is not your call. Don't give any signal. So what is the correct signal? Isn't that, isn't that the correct signal that the game's over? No. If the trail no. had done it? Buzzer no. goes off, game over. That's it, huh? A lot of people will tell you you need to blow your whistle, but you don't. Oh, okay. Okay. If you blow your whistle, it's okay. You know, no one's going to mark you off. And most people actually do blow their whistle, but the whistle doesn't mean anything. The horn means the game is over. If the ball is getting close to going into the basket and you need to blow your whistle to draw attention to yourself to let everyone know, even if it goes in, it's nothing, mm -hmm. then you blow your whistle because the, the purpose of the whistle. You throughout the attention. whole game, the purpose throughout the whistle is to say, look at me. Mm -hmm. I'm making a ruling. Here we go. So same at the end of the game. If I'm going to blow my whistle, nobody needs to know that the game's over if it fell 25 feet you know, short, right? It's if it gets close or we got to wave it off, then we blow our whistle. All right. Let me, I said one more. Let me do, let me do one more. I just wanted to make uh, one last comment yes. on the uh, thing uh, for the, for when it's usually, uh, you know, last second, I usually do, you know, the one real quick and then pat my chest two times, so let them know, hey, I died just in case it's not looking. And, and patting your chest, but not just doing it like a gorilla, obviously, right? <laughs> you want to do it so your partner sees, I got it. Because you're communicating with your partner. Same with the, hand, the finger going up. I've seen guys hold it up for 10, 15, 20 seconds. Mm. And maybe your partner doesn't see it, but don't, you look like a fool, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can hold it up. Your partner doesn't know, okay, I'll put it down. If he doesn't know, but you know, this is the signal for maybe, it's not in the signals chart, but the, uh, the manual does say we can do that as well. Wow, Josh, you got a lot of habits I got to break, man. I can't pat my head <laughs> on, the, on the lead, uh, on the trail, man. I, I don't know what to do. I'm going to be, okay. All right. All right, last one. I promise this is the last one. Anybody like that? No, oh, I thought he should have inbounded the ball where he was and should have pointed right to the that baseline, the sideline right there. All right, let's break this down. He has a traveling violation right here. Okay. okay? We're not going to look at the rule. We don't care about the rule. We know that he has the violation. Okay. Where does the throw in go? Right there on the sideline. Oh, you like mean where? 28 he... foot mark. Wow. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Roughly about... say it's right about the three point line. So just sure. below that hash mark on the yeah, side. Right yep. there. Yeah, right there. Because right. everything in this blue area goes to the sideline. Okay. Okay. And it, does it go to the opposite or table side? Table side. Oh, I never knew about the angles I... from the free throw line out. I just always thought it was like above or below the three point or free throw yep. line. So, so no. for going that. Once Closest you... to the spot of the violation. Correct. So it goes yes. if it's on if it's on whichever the, side it is. If it's on the mm -hmm. side of the table, it goes to the table yep. side. If it's on the side right. of the opposite table, it goes the opposite well, table. The opposite if it's right down the middle, well, then you can be a little lazy and, and decide what yeah. you want to do, I guess. Yeah. But yes, from the free throw line all the way down to the corner of the of the throw in. Uh it, it actually goes to yeah. That's funny. Table side is right. It looks like the um <laughs> that like was going to the end of the three right. point three it goes point all the side. way to the corner of the court okay okay all of that goes to the sideline side line. yeah now the kids seem to know where the ball goes because what did they do they run to the out of bounds where they wanted out what they wanted out at they gave it to the official here 
saying, here you go. Or maybe he's just giving it to the closest official. <laughs> but let me rewind here again, because the lead official, who's going to be the new trail, mm-hmm. is the one who has to administer this throw-in. Right. This is called a bump, bump and, and run. run. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you, the logically, if you think it through, do you think that the trail should have to run the entire length of the court and let the ruling official just stand there and wait for the ball to come to him and to do the throw in? No, no, that doesn't make any sense. So that's how you kind of say to yourself, well, wait a second. I could run halfway. He can run halfway. You're not switching in this situation. You're just simply bumping and running. You're staying in the same position that you, you were. It, it felt like that what was becoming the lead official didn't want to have to switch sides though. Yes, it's it's exactly what was happening. It's being lazy. To me, he should have he should have put the ball over to the side. That trail official, or what was the lead official, becomes a trail. But then he should have, instead of saying um, table side, he should have come opposite side. Correct. So that official right there, instead of throwing it all the way across, shouldn't he have? Yeah, he should have come all the way down over there. Okay, correct. Without running through players, but yeah. He would have That's gone, what I would have expected to happen. Correct. He would have gone all the way around the out edge and then come across to the other side yeah. of the end line. Yeah. So Josh, and, did you move those guys or did that actually happen like that? Did that uh, lead, original lead walk over to the side and the no. trail throw the ball like no, that? I, I, put that, in, that? I put that in there to illustrate what they should have done. Oh, okay. I was getting ready to say what a... Yeah. <laughs> 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 I put that in there because... We can't be lazy. And again, I get it. We're saving steps or whatever the situation may have been. But okay, it's and it was it wasn't even like close. It was on that side table side. And he sure, threw it absolutely. all the way to the other side. Yeah. Now, did it yeah. make any impact on how they resumed the game? Probably not. But that's not the point. If you get used to doing it that, then mm-hmm. when it comes to a time where you need to do it right, mm-hmm. or a coach may call you out on it, mm-hmm. you have no defense. Yeah, you're lazy. That's really all it comes down to. Yeah. Or you don't know what you're doing. That could be. All right. I could have gone and had so many more videos. I didn't think I was going to have enough. Was this helpful? Yeah. Yes. yes thank you. Especially for, for me, Josh, I don't do varsity. So, uh, you know, I'm always two man. So I, I uh, appreciate a lot of these uh, details here. Well, I plan on just so you all know, I've been so derelict of my duties as far as posting videos. I plan on putting out a whole series on two-person mechanics uh, in my, my court talk that I've started. I plan on putting some stuff out, just single videos to look at as a resource, because the more I talk to guys, I've heard, hey, how come you don't do any two-person? I only do two-person. I do majority two-person. So there, there's a need for it. So I want to try and start producing some stuff. So if you guys have video, I know you don't want me to pick it apart and show you they did everything wrong. But if you have video of a two-person game and you want to share it with me, I would love to have it and go through it. Uh, next month, October 20th, third Thursday of the month again. And we're going to work, we're going to look at positioning. So hopefully we'll have a lot of primary coverage area type stuff where you should be standing, maybe move down, maybe move in, maybe move out. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Because again, positioning really is more important than almost anything. Uh, in order to get the call right. If you're not in the right position, you just might not see it right. So, Josh, is this meeting schedule posted online? It's on the website, uh, www.officialsinstitute.org. So if you want to go to the website, you can find it and and always see when the next one is. It's always going to be the third Thursday of the month. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. All right. Thanks for coming. All right, bye. All righty.